Hey, this is Jamal and today I show you how to use Pixel Camera in RenderMan. All of those settings are based on real camera settings, but I will not get too far into that. If you want to have an extra tutorial to that, then write it in the comments down below. The most important thing we need to know while using Pixel Camera is how far the object we want to have in focus in our camera is away from our camera. There are two common ways to find out this distance. The first way is this camera here I prepared. Um, I will not show you how to make this camera. You can download it in the description box down below. And if you want to have a tutorial for that, then you can write it down in the comments. The cool thing with that is you can place this locator here and the place where the locator is will always be in focus. But the way I personally prefer to do is to go to display, heads up display and object details. And now you can select the point you want to be in focus and then you can see how far it is away. And then you can type the number into the focal distance tab, which I will show you in a second. But first I'm going to show you how to create a pixel camera. For that you have to select your camera and then go in attribute editor down to renderman and create camera projection right click to this point and create pixel camera the first parameter you see here is field of view if you increase the number it enables a larger view from your camera so like from a wide angle lens and if you want to have a telephoto lens look, then you have to decrease the number. The first thing we need to do is to find out our focal distance. That means which part of our scene is in focus. Now it's getting a bit complex if you don't know anything about real camera settings. There are two different ways to affect your depth of field. The first parameter is f-stop. If you decrease the number of f-stop, the circle of confusion size in your scene gets bigger. And the second parameter is the other way around. So if you decrease the number there, the circle of confusion gets smaller. Let's have a look at tilt angle. If you increase the number of tilt angle, you can see there's barely no difference. But um, if we come a bit closer, then you can see what happens. This shifts our lens a bit forward or backward. With roll angle instead, you can tilt the lens sideways. If you increase the number of shift X, your image section goes to the right. And if you decrease it, it goes to the left. And if you increase shift Y, it goes up. And if you decrease it, it goes down. With a higher number of radial distortion, it squeezes your image a bit together and a lower number affects this sort of fisheye effect. With field of view, you can get this fisheye effect too, but then you'll have to replace your camera. The difference between those two radial distortion sliders is just the angle of the distortion. Asymmetric distortion squeezes your picture together on the X or on the Y axis. Now let's come to anamorphic squeeze. This is in my opinion a very advanced feature because this has something to do with anamorphic lenses on real cameras and they squeeze the picture together on the X axis. So you can only see an effect if your asymmetric distortion on the X axis is turned on. With chromatic aberration, you can give your scene a sort of vintage looking style. And to get this, you will have to go to transverse and put the color slightly, but really slightly to the red side. And on the axial slider, you can give it a slight greenish looking black or maybe blue. And then you can see we're getting this cool effect here. But if you go too far with that, if you go much more to the red side or to the blue or green side, then you can see it goes too far, in my opinion. Um, 
at least you won't get a realistic result like from older cameras. Vignetting darkens the outer area of your picture, but as you can see, it darkens it very softly. Um, the same thing with the optical slider here. Um, if you really want to see an effect on that, you'll have to choose a wider angle, as you can see here. You can only see an effect on your shutter if you're using a motion blur. If duration is set to 1, you can also see no effect on your scene. So if you want to see that, then you'll have to decrease the number of that. The lower the number, the more you will see. I personally take it to 0.5. With the weep you can affect the way you shot a closer, so whether it closes from right to left or from up to down. And that's everything you need to know about Pixar Camera. Thank you for watching and see you next time.